Hey from the kitchen folks, today I'm going to be starting off a new batch of wine. So the wine that I'm going to make is going to be red grape and peach flavour and I shall be adding to that um, a bag of sugar, almost a gallon of still spring water and some champagne yeast. So I'm going to begin by making some must from my fruit and it's simply a case of adding all these into the blender minus the stalks and I've washed the grapes in advance so that's all my grapes now in so now I'm going to chop my peaches and just cut round them and twist them to remove the stones and the peach flesh goes in the blender also. So there's my fruit in the blender. And now I'm going to add a bit of spring water. And now the noisy bit. So what I've basically got here is a bit of a healthy fruit smoothie, but I'm going to make it decidedly unhealthy by adding a bag of sugar and some yeast to it, which will ferment to make the alcohol. So what I've got here is a saucepan of spring water, which I'm now bringing to the boil. I'm going to add into the water some of the sugar from the bag. And I just want to add that in there until it dissolves as the water warms up. Incidentally, I'm using spring water because the tap water in Leeds just has a bit of a chlorine taste to it and I found that in the past it spoiled my wine sometimes. So as the water warms, the sugar dissolves and I can add a little bit more. And again, just stir it around. And while I'm waiting for that to dissolve, I'm going to take my mixture of fruit and spring water and I'm going to gently sieve it. Now this is going to make a very sedimenty wine to begin with and that's fine. I actually want there to be a good amount of sediment because that's where the flavour is. I'm just helping the liquid through a little bit with the use of a wooden spoon. It's quite a slow job. So after a fair amount of wooden spoon persuasion, this is where we are. So the depth of that is likely to be what the sediment will uh, end up at. And I'm not worried about that because I'm going to let it ferment with all the sediment to begin with before I then start to take some of the sediment out. So I'm just going to wash my blender out. Just give it a rinse. That's with a bit more spring water and I'll add that to the damage on also. So here is the sugar and water. It's just about dissolved. So it's nice and syrupy and thick and buoyant. So now I add my sugar water into the damage on. This is very sticky so anything that goes on the outside will need rinsing off. Okay, my intention is to make sparkling wine. So I'm using Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast. So I've let the temperature of the mixture decrease. It's not too hot now, it's just a little bit warmer than body temperature. So I can add some yeast to it. I'm not really measuring the yeast amount, but I'm imagining that there's a couple of teaspoons. And that will sit on top unless I go like this and it will begin to sink and mix and the yeast when it comes into contact with the sugar and the fruit is going to get very excited and that's when the fermentation will begin. So what I'm going to do now is add my airlock and that will keep any impurities in the air from entering the demijohn. 
The yeast and the fermentation will create CO2, the pressure will increase inside, the CO2 will rise, and then the water in the airlock will go boop, boop, as gas bubbles pass through it. So that's what we're waiting to happen. And it probably won't take very long because this is quite fast acting yeast. Well, it's only been in the Demijohn for about 15 minutes and already the fermentation has started and it's really quite fast. It's very good yeast, this very fast acting stuff. So I think I can safely put this one away now for a little while. So there's my Demijohn labelled up and there pop, pop, popping away goes the wine. You can see the distinct layers appearing within it. It'll be very sediment heavy and that's fine. I'm going to let it ferment for about three weeks with all the sediment in and then I'm going to come back to it to remove the wine from the sediment and we'll take it from there. So I'll see you in about three weeks folks. Hey folks from the kitchen, it's just over two weeks later and now I want to remove the liquid from this separating out the fruit matter in the top and the sediment in the bottom. So I've got a second demijohn down here which has been cleaned and sterilised and it's got a funnel and a muslin bag in the top and that will hopefully catch all the bits or most of the bits and uh, then let the liquid through. So I've poured some of the wine from the demijohn into this funnel which has got a muslin bag in the top and that should catch all the bits and let the liquid through. It's quite a long slow process so this is going to take a while. Okay so that took quite a while but as you can see I've got most of the wine in there and that is what is left. I'm going to empty that. So now I've got some water, spring water, which I'm just heating up and I'm going to add to that spring water some sugar. I'm just free pouring. I have no idea how much is going in here. Let's say 300 grams, 400 grams. I'm not sure. Okay, I've got my original Demijohn clean. I've got all of the wine that I was taking out in this Demijohn and I'm going to pour it back into the original Demijohn. So also in goes the warm sugar water. So there we have it folks, if we look at that you can still see there's life in that, there's fermentation happening and indeed the airlock is popping so that's all a good sign. So I'm going to leave this now to ferment for a further two weeks and then I'm going to clear it ready for bottling. Well hello from the kitchen folks, today I'm going to be clearing my red grape and peach wine. So the wine's now been fermenting since the 14th of December and today it's the 19th of January so it's had over a month. It's still going reasonably well, it's still bubbling away and there's definite fermentation activity if you can see the bubbles just there. But I'm trying to create a sparkling wine so I'm going to clear it now in the hope that I can clear it and get it bottled before it stops sparkling uh, and that will hopefully give us something nice and fizzy. So I've got my second image on down here ready to transfer this into and uh, first of all we need to get some siphoning done. So I've got my trusty siphoning tube, I'll put one end up here and then here we go, the fun bit. So I'm using Clear It Wine Finings, it comes in two bottles, bottle A and bottle B and you put bottle A into your mixture, swish it around, wait an hour and then bottle B goes in. So here goes a few drops of A, that should be enough. I'm trying to avoid getting any sediment in from the bottle of the Demijohn but it's not always easy as you can see sometimes little bits will fly up. I want to try and get as much wine as possible. Oh, it's just about to finish, you'll get bubbles in the tube in a second. And that means that is done. 
So I lift that out. So just giving it a good swish around. So that's now swished around. I'm just going to put the airlock back in while we wait another hour for me to be able to add findings B. In the interim, I'm going to take the original damage on to pelt the mixture in the bottom. It's no good for anything. I can't use it on the garden, it's too acidic. I want to rinse this out. Okay, now it's up, so it's now time to transfer back into this damage on. So there's no need to be siphoning now, I just want to pour it so it's all mixing and nicely agitated. I've added about a third of the mixture. Now I've got wine findings B, which is going to go in. Okay, this is when the magic should happen. So I've put the uh, bung back in. Now it's just a case of leaving it for a few days and hopefully those findings will have an effect. They will grab hold of all the matter in the liquid, drag it to the bottom, so I'll end up with a layer of sediment and hopefully, if it works, clear wine above it. Fingers crossed. See you in a bit. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's bottling day today for the red grape and peach wine. And as you can see, it hasn't um, cleared with the finings, it's become a little bit clearer. There is a, a small layer of sediment in the bottom, but it's going to be one which is uh, um, a little bit cloudy. And I think that's because I've boiled the fruit and that's made the fibres just too small for the finings to clear. Anyway, I'm all prepared. I've got my bottles cleaned and sterilised. I've got my kit over there already, so let's get on with it. So because I'm trying to make the wine sparkle, I'm just going to add a teaspoonful of sugar into each of the bottles which should kickstart the fermentation and give it a little bit of fizz hopefully. Right here goes keep my siphoning tube from the bottom just try and keep it a little bit above the fun bit and here we go. Those few bubbles are quite a positive sign, so fingers crossed. Okay, we're nearly done. I'm trying to avoid the sediment. And there we go. Okay, so I've ended up with five full bottles and then just a very, very tiny amount in here, which I'm going to have a little try at now. But before doing that, I'm just going to get my corks in. So they've been softening in hot water, so they'll be nice and easy to push in. If you don't soften them in hot water, it can be painful. Very stiff, but you know you're getting a good seal. Oh, still hurts your hand, you know. And last but not least, there we go, all five done. So there's my bottles. But I just need to get these cages on them first uh, before we go any further, otherwise we might see corks are popping. Okay, I'm just cleaning my equipment again now. But here's today's Net result, five bottles. They just need labelling now before putting them away. 
and here's the little bit which I've just tried uh, as a bit of a sample so let's see how it goes really nice so sweet very 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 peachy in fact it's probably the most peachy flavoured one I've done out of the peachy wines I've done lately quite syrupy strong I would say it's definitely over 10% but as I'm not used to hygrometer or hydrometer sorry I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure Ooh. and there we go clean and done well that was quite dramatic anyway folks cheers yes very nice. I hope it goes sparkling. If it does go sparkling, it'll be a real winner. Only time will tell. So I'll catch up with you when I unbottle one of these in a couple of weeks' time. See you later, kids. Okay, so it's two weeks after bottling. And now it's time to open the red grape and peach wine and see what it's like. So I'm looking for four different aspects to this wine. I want to get a little bit of fizz from it. I would like it to smell nice. I would like it to taste nice. And I would like it to be clear. And if I can get three out of four, I'll be happy. If I can get all four, I'll be ecstatic. So let's see what happens. Let's see if we get any kind of pop. Hmm, slight pop. Oh, fruity. Right, let's have a look. Right. That has got a very mild sparkle. I don't know if I could call it a sparkling wine, but a very mild. But look at the lovely colour. Pinkish tinge. It's fairly clear. It smells amazing it smells so peachy wow that is literally like being hit in the mouth with a peach that's incredible that is extremely fruity peachy wine definite slight sparkle on the tongue Nothing major about it, it's very subtle, but it's definitely there. I think I can call this a success. I'm very happy with this. Cheers, folks. I'm looking forward to my next brew, whatever that may be. See you later. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.